Welcome to Ignani.com. C Programming. Chapter 7. Receiving Inputs in C. In the previous chapter, we created a simple interest calculator, with fixed values for the variables principal amount, number of years, and rate of interest. Every time you run the program, you get the same value for simple interest. If you wanted to calculate the simple interest for a different set of values, then you have to make changes to the code and recompile it. There wasn't any way a user can calculate the simple interest for a different set of values without changing code and recompiling it. If a program has to be useful to others, then it should ask them to enter the values using their keyboard, and calculate the simple interest for the user supplied values. So far in this course, you have learned to send output to the computer's screen by printing data using printf function. Let me show you how to receive input from the user using scanf function. In this chapter, let us enhance our simple interest calculator program by allowing the user to key in principal amount, number of years and rate of interest. Scanf function scanf function is a counterpart of the printf function. While the printf outputs the values to the screen, scanf receives the values from the keyboard. scanf is another built-in function provided by the standard input-output library, to read standard input from the keyboard, and to store it in previously declared variables. The format for using scanf function is scanf format specifier, variable. The format specifier tells scanf how to treat the incoming data. Download the sample, 007 underscore 01.c from our site www.ignani.com. Let me copy over the code for the enhanced simple interest calculator. The comments on lines 1 to 3, states the name and description of the program. Notice the changes in this code compared to the earlier version. All the four variables are declared and initialized together. Two variables are of type integer and the remaining two are of type float. The lines 8 and 9 could have also been combined in this manner. The lines from 13 to 20 prompts the user to enter data and also reads and stores the data into its respective variables. Let me execute this program now. Line 13 is responsible for printing this string, enter the principal amount, and it positions the cursor at the end of the line. This message is known as a prompt, since it tells the user to take a specific action. The next statement on line 14 uses scanf to obtain a value from the user. The scanf function reads from the standard input, which is usually the keyboard. As you can see, it takes two arguments. First one is the format specifier, which indicates the type of data that should be input by the user. The percent %d format specifier, indicates that the data should be an integer and the value entered by the user will be converted into an integer. Because of this conversion, it's also known as conversion specifier. The percent symbol is treated by the scanf and printf, as a special character that begins a format specifier. Second argument is the variable. The variable name is prefixed with an ampersand, which is an address of operator. It gives the location number used by the variable in memory. In other words, the ampersand when prefixed to a variable name tells the scanf function, the address of the memory which has been allocated to the variable principal amount. When we say ampersand principal amount, we are informing scanf function the memory location where the value supplied by the user has to be stored. It then stores the value entered by the user in that memory location. Don't break your head and try to find the reason for using this ampersand. 
I will cover them in detail later on in this course while covering pointers. Note, if you forget to prefix the ampersand operator to the variable name, it will not always result in any compile time errors, but it will cause problems with memory access during program execution. The same steps repeat for the next set of printf and scanf statements from line 16 to 20. When the computer executes the scanf statement on line 14, it waits for the user to enter a value for the variable principal amount. Once the user responds by typing an integer, it waits for the enter key to be pressed, which indicates the end of input. It then assigns the integer value to the variable principal amount. However, one change that is to be noticed here, is the use of %f format specifier as the first argument, which indicates the data should be a floating point number, since the variable rate of interest is of float type. Printf and scanf functions facilitate interaction between the computer and the user. Since this interaction resembles a dialogue, it's known as, interactive computing, or conversational computing. As with printf function, we can also use a single scanf to read data into multiple variables as in this code. First argument includes a set of three format specifiers, which are followed with the set of variables all prefixed with ampersand. If I run the code, it waits for me to input data for all the three variables in the order that I have set in the scanf statement. You can use a space, a tab or a new line character to separate the values for each of these variables, and indicate the completion with a enter key press. Space is created using the space bar, tab using the tab key and new line using the enter key. Notice, I am using the enter key to separate the values for each of these variables. Let me show the same process by using a space to separate the values. Again using the tab key. It works the same way as it did with the three scanf statements used earlier. The remaining statements have not changed from the previous version. This statement calculates the simple interest, and assigns the result to variable simple interest, using the assignment operator equals. Line 27 uses the printf function, and prints the values entered by the user as specified within the printf function. The printf on line 28, displays the simple interest. Let me execute the program and see how it works. I am still using the single line scanf statement to read data for all the three variables. I use tab to separate the values entered by the user. Notice, the input was read correctly, and displayed with the result. Let me revert to individual scanf statement for each variable. The end result is also the same. This completes the scanf statement and our simple interest calculator is also ready. Good programming practice to follow. Declare all the variables at the top of the function. Separate the variable declarations, and other statements in a function with one blank line, to emphasize where the declarations end, and the statements begin. Place spaces on either side of an operator, which makes the operator stand out, and makes the program more readable. Leaving a space after each comma, makes it easier to read the arguments and the program as a whole. Some accidental errors that a programmer does while programming. In an assignment statement, the calculation part or the constant should always be on the right hand side of the equals operator. Forgetting one or both the double quotes, surrounding the format control string in a printf or scanf. Forgetting the percent symbol before the format specifier in printf or scanf statements. Forgetting to prefix ampersand, before the variable names in a scanf statement when it's required, and prefixing an ampersand when it's not required. 
having escape sequence outside the double quotes surrounding the format control string in a printf or scanf functions. Having more or less number of expressions whose values are to be printed or acquired by printf or scanf functions respectively. Placing the comma, that is supposed to separate the format control string from the expressions, inside a format control string itself. Using incorrect format specifiers to read data using scanf function. Next chapter starts with arithmetic in C. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how to videos, and much, much more at our site www.ignani.com. Post all your questions at our site. We will be happy to help you. We want your learning process to be as interactive as possible. Feel free to contact us.